I'm building a deck from scratch and yesterday I just got around to adding these noggins. I hadn't quite finished so I'm going to do that today. I tell you what though, this job is hard work on your knees. <sighs> Everything was going so well until I noticed that I'd made another little mistake. I managed to get these last two noggins in the wrong place. I was offsetting them one to the left and then one to the right and when I got down to this bit they weren't quite in the right place. I'd even pre-drilled the holes in the wrong places. To start to fix it I secured the ones that were already in the correct place and then I had to move these two at the bottom. This one I'd already secured and I just wiggled it over to the right place and then pre-drilled some holes in the correct place here and here and in this side and then added this middle one where it should have been. This wasn't a huge problem apart from needing to take out the screws and put them back in again but because I had already screwed in some holes in the other location I'm going to add some decking oil into those holes to make sure that water doesn't get in there and it doesn't rot. I thought it would make a really good shot to show you how strong the deck is by standing on it. And when I did, I realised that it kind of wiggled a little bit. It depressed whenever I stood on it, which makes me think it's not going to be quite as strong as I wanted. But there's a couple of things that I'm going to do to resolve this. The first will be adding some breeze blocks underneath these lengths of wood. This will stop the wood from sinking. And the other thing I'm going to do is add some thicker beams around the sides. But before I do that, I wanted to lay all of my decking down to kind of make sure that I've measured right, to make sure that it's actually going to be the right width. Oh, sorry, carrots, you had to go. I wasn't able to position the decking down very well in that far corner because it was going to sit on my squash and I couldn't move the pump for the hot tub because it's kind of screwed into a particular place. So I just rested these on top. I thought I would start by cutting the piece that's going to sit on the edge of the deck. This means I need to cut out some shapes for the post. I paused to do a couple of pieces to camera for my short form content. For all of these pieces of decking, I'm going to cut the end off. Usually they come with quite a rough edge and I want that to be flush and flat. They're not always 100% 90 degrees from the other angle either. So that's another good reason to just chop off the end. There we have our finished end. You don't need to take off much. I've just taken off 0.5 millimeters, completely flush end. I can now butt this up the very edge of the decking and it will look perfectly straight. This piece that I'm cutting now is actually going to be for the other side of the post, but I've laid it on the decking because it's easier for me to draw the lines either side of the post. Now that I've worked out where the location of the post is in that direction, I have to put it at this slightly awkward angle to work out where the lines need to be in the other direction. When I come to finish this deck, I'm going to add some decking boards all around the sides. This will be decorative and make it look more appealing. Because of that, I need to work out how thick the decking board is so I can work out where this piece that I'm cutting will rest. So I yoinked this piece of decking off the top and used this as a measure. I'm just resting it up where it would normally be and I'm going to use that as a guide so I can push this to the edge, make sure that I get my measurements right. I even used my set square to rest up against it to make sure that it was flush. Sometimes it feels like it's flush and it's not. And when you use a set square, you realise it's a little bit out. Once I'd marked where it needed to go, I then was able to get my set square and draw a more firm line. In this piece, I've drawn the horizontal. <laughs> On this piece, I've drawn the horizontal and vertical lines so that I know which piece I need to cut out to fit it nicely. 
around that post. That X there is for the dead piece. Sometimes people put a little, little line or an X to show which bit it is that's going to be uh, cut out. This is important because I need to cut inside the line. If I cut on the line or this side of the line, it would be too big. As it happens, <laughs> I'm gonna change my mind. That is true what I've just said, but I don't want it to be butted up exactly against this post because it's gonna be too tight. So I am actually gonna saw on the line because that way it's gonna take away just a couple of millimeters worth of wood and allow it to fit snugly around the post. Okay, let's cut this out. I'm gonna use my jigsaw, I think. goodness sake. I'm just working out uh, which blade I want to use on this particular piece of wood. The one that I have in there at the moment, it's not very long and that means that it's not going to be long enough to get through this piece of wood. What you don't want is for it to catch because then it will sort of bounce if it's not long enough. It has to be long enough to get through the bit of wood basically. So I was having a look at what else I have in here. Oh, There's a few different types that are designed for wood. This one, for example, is designed for wood. But you'll notice it has very big blades. That will leave a very jagged edge. It'll be very untidy. That might be good, for example, for sawing through a branch in the woods. Let's have a look for a long blade that is also a bit more fine. I'm gonna leave a slightly neater edge. See that one? That one's actually designed for metal. That's much finer teeth. Would leave a much cleaner line. Metal, wood, wood, wood. Okay. Smaller teeth, designed for wood. It's a bit longer than what I've got. Let's see if this works. The mechanism on tools like this are usually very straightforward. This one just pops up and that releases the blade. Always do this without the battery and not that it plugged in because you never know which buttons you might accidentally press. Pull the blade out. Okay. The difference in the size makes all the difference. And pop this one in. And when you release that it clips it into place. I check that it's solid, I put the battery in and check that it works. Sometimes when I'm filming the focus on the camera doesn't quite know what to focus on, especially if I'm close to the camera and I'm also doing some work that's a bit far away. And I imagine that my camera is a person and it's panicking, going, what do you want me to focus on? The thing that you're doing or your face? I don't know what to do. And so it kind of just panics and flits between the two. And um, that's what I'm imagining my camera saying as, uh, as I watch this video, watching, <laughs> watching the focus just go crazy. The easiest way to cut something like this would be to put it on top of a workbench and clamp it down. I'm working on it on this deck because I can use my foot to hold it down. But it's a bit awkward, especially as I'm standing on a deck that itself isn't very stable. So pulling it onto a workbench would probably be better practice, especially since this post is in the way. How am I going to get that corner? I hear you ask. I'm going to go in at a diagonal and I'm going to cut the way across. I'm going to do the same there and that will allow me to get in to do that last bit. Hmm, some more splendid camera work from me here. It's like I don't want you to even see it. It's a secret. It's a tiny bit wonky at the bottom. I'm going to turn it over and straighten it out. I'm actually going to cut out this other one first before I slide it into place. And 
by other one, I mean cut the shape around the second post because I obviously can't slide it into place before the second post is cut out. To be able to cut out the second part, I wanted to put this roughly in position of where it was going to be and then I can mark the other hole on the other side a little bit easier. As I was doing this, I was just feeling the end of it to see if it was flush and I thought I would take a little look because it felt like it wasn't very flush, like it wasn't quite long enough to uh, be flush with the edge. So this bit that I've cut, I feel like it needs to be a tiny bit further this way. Look, you can see the wood is overlapping. So I'm going to, and this is when I realized. In fact, my brain is not braining because there's going to be a piece of wood here as well. So that's actually in the wrong place. Boo. Okay, it's, pro it's fine. This is what happens. Sometimes you cut stuff and then you realise you've done it wrong. This piece is too long for this anyway, so it's not like I've wasted the board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get another board and I'm going to stick it here so that I remember that it needs to be a little bit wider, just like I've done with this one. I'm going to cut this off just here and then I'm going to cut this little bit out again. And I'm going to make sure it's long enough and then I'm going to cut out that side. Okay, we're exploring this together. Will it fit? Will it not fit? I've recut it. Moment of truth. Oh, it's a bit stuck. I'm going to shave a little bit up of here. Okay, moment of truth, take two. Ooh. Oh, it looks promising. <laughs> oh, that looks good. And then that fits that side. Oh, perfect! Oh. I did it, look, look what I did. <laughs> Give me praise. Oh. Now I've got to do the rest. But I'm gonna leave the rest for a different day. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel.